this is Jennifer with A Crochet Simplicity and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to make my knit look super bulky slouch. This hat uses a technique for the crown called short row shaping and a lot of people are not familiar with that. I use it in most of my hat patterns because I really love how it shapes the crown. We don't have any excess bulk here from just creating a rectangle and cinching the top closed. You get a lot of extra bulk. So in this tutorial we're going to work short rows. The rows will get progressively shorter and then we finish them up with a long row. And I'll show you how to do this technique. It's really simple and I hope you love it as much as I do. So let's gather our materials. First we're going to start with the yarn. For the adult version I used Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick. It's a number six super bulky yarn. And for the kids, I used Lion Brand Hometown USA, again a number six super bulky yarn. My daughter really liked this color, this is why we went with this one. We also need crochet hooks. For the adult version, I used a nine millimeter. And for the kids, I used a 10 millimeter. And I'll go over why in just a second. But you need to use whatever hook that you can meet gauge with. You need some locking stitch markers. You can also use a scrap piece of yarn, but you'll have to tie them and untie them. You want them to stay in place while you're working your hat. So I like the clover locking stitch markers. They're easy to use and they're relatively cheap. You need a yarn needle to weave in your ends. A tape measure to check your gauge. And a pair of scissors. So go ahead and gather all that and we're going to get started. Before we begin, I want to talk for just a minute about the two different yarns. They're both number six super bulky yarns, but I used a different crochet hook for each different size hat. And there's a reason for that. So if you look at the yarns together, they're about the same size widthwise, but if you squeeze them, one has more bounce than the other, which you can compress a little bit more when you gently squeeze, compress it a little bit more than the other one. And that is the Lion Brand Thick and Quick. I can squeeze it a little bit more. So this tells me that the hometown is a little more dense, so it's going to be a little stiffer hat. So I ended up using a slightly larger crochet hook because I wanted the hat to have a nice drape and not be sticking on the top of my daughter's head. Okay, so the woolies thick and quick. It's, I wouldn't say it's softer. They're both soft yarns, but if you lightly squeeze them, they can squeeze a little bit flatter than the Hometown USA. I hope this explains it well, but this is the reason that I chose the different crochet hooks that I chose. Now, you're going to want to use the crochet hook that gives you the proper gauge of your hat. As long as you meet the gauge with your hat and you use a similar weight yarn, then your hat should have the same drape as the ones that I made. So I hope that explains the different size crochet hooks. But again, you want to use whatever size hook gives you the proper gauge. That'll help your hat be the correct size to fit the intended wearer. So for the video tutorial, because it's a little easier to see on camera, I'm going to use the Hometown USA. So I'm going to go ahead and get that, get it set up, and I'll meet you back here to begin row one of your hat. Okay, so I've got my hook and I've got my yarn. Before I begin any crochet project, I always pull a few yards of yarn and lay it next to me so I can work from that instead of pulling directly from the ball or the skein. Pulling directly from the ball or the skein can really affect your tension. So I prefer to have it laying next to me loosely and just work from that. And as I go, I just pull more from the ball. So the first thing you're gonna do, is add a slip knot to your hook Again, I'm using a 10 millimeter hook because this is the Hometown USA. You're going to chain the length of row one. So follow along in your pattern and chain the length. I'm going to make a shorter hat just to show you the techniques I used and show you all the tips and tricks I have to share with you. So I'm only going to chain 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now go ahead and chain however many it says for the adult or the kid version, whatever one you're making. The next thing it says to do is to work into the back humps of the foundation chain. 
well the back humps are these ridges here. Here you see the loops and this is the back hump of your foundation chain. So you're going to work your stitches of row one into the, that hump. So we're going to work a half double crochet into the second chain from your hook. And then you're going to work a half double crochet into each chain across. Again, working into the back hump of your foundation chain. Now in the pattern, I included a gauge swatch. I know there are many of us that try to just hurry along into a project and don't want to check our gauge, but then we do get frustrated when things don't fit properly. Now if you don't, didn't make a gauge swatch, I also included a couple of measurements throughout the pattern to help keep you on track. One of those measurements is at the end of row one, I gave you a length. So for the child's hat, your row one should measure roughly 11 and a half inches. If it only measures 11 inches, go ahead, pull out row one, and add an extra chain or two. If you're slightly over, it's okay, but if you end up too short, then your hat's going to be too short. Now for the adult version, row one should be around 13 inches long. That's not going to be the finished length of your hat. When working short rows, part of the length is going to be eaten up with our short rows. Okay, so don't worry about that. Plus we're going to be folding up the, the band on the hat, so that again is going to make your hat shorter. So to adjust the length of row one, it's really simple. Go ahead and pull that out. And if your hat is too long already, pull out a couple of chains. If your hat is too short at this point, add a couple more chains till you get close to that length. So after you've done that, you get your row one to the proper length, we're gonna go ahead and add a couple of stitch markers. Now these, once you get used to this, you don't need to use them. But if you've never worked short rows before, or if you had, have a hard time finding out which loops to work into, stitch markers are a great way to help keep you on track. So the first one you're going to add is in the very first stitch of row one. We're going to add it to the front loop of that first half double crochet. There's a reason why we're adding it to the front loop and I'll show you that once we get to our final row of a short row section and work down. So we'll add it to the front loop only of that very first half double crochet. And then we're going to add it to the front loop only of our last stitch. Okay, so the front loop only of the first stitch of the row and the front loop only of the last stitch of the row. Now we're going to chain one and we're going to turn. A nice way to keep a nice straight edge is to make sure that you're always turning your work the same direction. So don't turn your work to the left once and then turn it to the right the next time, you get a really uneven jagged edge. So a nice way to keep it as neat as possible is to always make sure you turn the same way. So now the next row calls for working a slip stitch into the back loop only of the next so many stitches. Now the reason we place this for a stitch marker is to, so that when you turn and you need to work in the back loop only, you can easily identify it. So there's no guessing. So if you don't have to use the stitch marker, you don't have to. But for those of you who have a trouble seeing which one is the actual back loop, then go ahead and place it before you turn your work. Because with a half double crochet, you end up with three loops. You have the top loops and then there's that third loop there. So sometimes when you turn, you could actually think that this front loop is the back loop and it's not. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that stitch marker because I don't need it anymore. And we're gonna work a back loop only, slip stitch, and each stitch across to the last stitch. Leave this last stitch unworked where you place the stitch marker. So don't work into that one. Follow the pattern and it tells you how many stitches, as long as your gauge is the same as mine. Now working your slip stitches, make sure you don't pull them too tight. If you pull them too tight, then it'll decrease the size of your hat, okay? Make sure that you work your loops, you want your slip stitches the same size as the loops of the half double crochet. This will make sure that your stitches, your slip stitches and your half double crochet are the same size and you're not working them too tight. When I work slip stitches, I don't even hold the yarn in my yarn hand, my non-hook hand. I just let it glide through my fingers. 
That really helps your tension. Now, if your loops are a little bit larger than the half double crochet before it, not a big deal. Just make sure they're at least the same size as the half double crochet loops. Okay, so we worked in the back loop only. We slip stitched across, leaving the last stitch unworked. And this is our first short row, and it's called a short row because it's shorter than the previous row. So now we're going to chain one in turn, and we're going to work row three. Now again, if you need help, place a stitch marker into the front loop only of that last slip stitch that you worked from row two. So when you turn, you can see which one is the back loop. So that's where you need to work your first half double crochet for row three. So we're going to work into the back loop only, work a half double crochet into each stitch across. And there's our row three. So again, place a stitch marker into the front loop of the first half double crochet that you worked for row three. And leave that there. Now, again, if you need, place a stitch marker in the front loop of the last half double crochet that you worked to the row. And we're gonna chain one turn, making sure we turn the same direction. Okay, now we're going to work a, in the back loop only. We're going to work a slip stitch in each stitch across, leaving the last stitch unworked. Work in the back loop only, work a slip stitch into each stitch across. Now here's the last stitch. We're not going to work into this one. This completes our row four. And chain one and turn. And again, we're gonna work into the back loops only, half double crochet into each stitch across. And working into the back loop only for the entire row. And I've run out of yarn in my little pile, so I need to pull some more from my ball. Okay, so half double crochet into the back loop only of each stitch across. Now again, add a stitch marker into the front loop only of the first half double crochet that you worked. Now once you get used to this and you, your eyes are trained to see these stitches easily, you won't need to add all these stitch markers. I'm just going to add them to show you to make it easier on camera. Okay, Chain one and turn. Again, add a stitch marker to the front loop only of the last stitch if you need to. Now work a slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch across to the last stitch, leaving the last stitch unworked. And see how your rows are beginning to angle? Because of the short rows, it gets shorter and shorter. Okay, now we're going to chain one and turn. Again, if you need to add a stitch marker here, put it in the front loop of that last stitch. So we work into the back loop only, work a half double crochet into that first stitch and a half double crochet in the back loop of each stitch across. And this is row seven.
Now for row seven, you don't have to add a stitch marker to the front loop only of this stitch. You can if you'd like, but you don't have to. And there's a reason for that, and I'll show you that in just a minute. If you'd like to add a stitch marker into the front loop only of the last half double crochet of the row, go ahead. I'm gonna chain one and turn. Now row eight in this pattern is a row where our stitch count now is going to be what the original stitch count was for row one. We're gonna work across row seven, and then we're gonna work down the diagonal into each of these skipped stitches where we place a stitch marker. And that's going to finish up a section of our short rows and help shape the crown. So working into the back loop only, work a slip stitch into each stitch across row seven. And now we're gonna reach down and work a slip stitch into the back loop only of each unworked row. The stitch from each row down the edge. We're working into the odd rows. So you can go ahead and remove the stitch marker if you can like. You can leave it there. As long as it's not in your way, you can leave it there if you'd like. Now, when you work into the next stitch, there's quite a gap here, but you want to pull your work in a little bit and make sure still that your slip stitches are the same size as the previous ones. So work into the back loop only of that unworked stitch and make a slip stitch. Now we're going to work down to the next one with the stitch marker. I'm going to leave it in there just to show you. Insert your hook into that back loop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull it through your loop to complete a slip stitch. Okay, I'm just going to push that stitch marker out of the way. We'll remove it at the end. And now we're going to go to that first row where we put our first stitch marker and again insert our hook into that back loop only. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it right through the loop on your hook to complete that slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain just so I can show you. See how that takes our section and creates a nice little wedge. She should have an angled wedge. I'm going to turn around, turn my work, pull the stitch markers out, and show you on the front side of the hat. So this is the right side of your hat, and this is our first short row section. So each of these short row sections uses eight rows, and they're going to each be worked like this. Now where you can adjust the width of your hat. I showed you how to adjust the length of your hat. Where you can adjust the width of your hat is by working a partial short row section, and I'll show you that in the next little bit. Now when you work all of these together, they create like a pie shape. You have several pies around the top of your crown, and that's what helps give it its shape. So let's continue on, let's say with row nine. We had chain one, now we're going to turn. Now we're going to begin working right into row eight, like we would any other pattern. Okay, so we're going to work into the back loop only. If you want to place a stitch marker in that last slip stitch, you can. It's not necessary. This is my chain one. This is the last slip stitch I worked. We're going to make a half double crochet into the back loop of the first stitch and into the back loop of each stitch across. Again, this is row nine. And this is the, how you work a row immediately after finishing up a short row section. You simply work your stitches into the previous row just like any other crochet that you work. I'm working a half double crochet into the back loop only of the previous row. Now again, we're going to use stitch markers. Place a stitch marker into the front loop only of that first stitch. When we finish up our next section of short rows, we don't go all the way down to row one. We only go to the beginning of that new section, and row nine is that next section. 
So that's why we're placing a stitch marker here. This helps keep you on track. And again, place a stitch marker here in the front loop only of the last half double crochet of the row if you'd like. Chain one and turn your work. We're going to work into the back loop only. Work a slip stitch into each stitch across to the last stitch, but we're going to leave the last stitch unworked. Remember to keep those slip stitches loose enough so that you don't cause your hat to shorten. Okay, leave that last stitch unworked. Chain one and turn. Now we're going to work into the back loop only, half double crochet into the first stitch and each stitch across, working in back loops only. Remove my hook for just a second. And place a stitch marker into the front loop only of the first half double crochet of that row. Now here I'm going to take a moment to talk about how to adjust the, the width of your hat to get it to size. So if you have somebody whose hat, their head doesn't hit, fit this exact size, you can easily add or remove a couple of rows to adjust the size of the hat. This is one of the reasons I love short row hats because as long as you have the perfect length for row one, you can easily adjust the circum circumference of your hat without having to start all over. Now if you work a top down hat or even a bottom up hat, if you get to the hats finished and it doesn't fit the intended wearer, then you've just wasted all that time. With a short row hat, all you need to do is add a couple more rows or frog a couple rows if it's too big. So I'm gonna go over that and show you how to do this. Now in the child size hat, you'll notice the instructions call for a partial short row section at the end. We have a bunch of full sections that look like this. They're eight rows. But at the end of the child size section, we have a partial section. To work a partial section, you simply need to end with a row of half double crochets and then work your seam. So it's really simple. So you can work one extra row of eight half double crochets. You could work three extra rows. You could work five extra rows. You could stop at any point as long as you end with a row of half double crochets before you do work your seam. And finishing up the section of short rows is the same as it is with a complete section you would still work in the back loop only all the way across that last row and then you would work in the back loop only of any of the unworked stitches to your first row of your section. So it's really simple. So like again, if you need to adjust the circumference of your hat, if your hat is too big, go ahead and frog some of those rows. Frog a couple. I would start, since this is super bulky yarn, I would start with only two because that can actually adjust your hat quite a bit. Okay, but if you need to add, make the hat bigger, then add extra rows. So even if the pattern stops at the end of a short row section, begin a new short row section and add a couple of rows. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish up. I'm gonna work just a couple more short row sections and finish up this hat so I can show you how to work the seam. So go ahead and follow along in your pattern. Work your hat as many rows as the pattern calls for. Fold it together, stretch it, maybe even stretch it around the, the intended wearer's head to see that it fits. If it fits, perfect, you're ready to move on to the seam. If it's a little snug, then you can add a couple extra rows. If it's a little too big, you can take out a couple extra rows. So I will meet you back here. We're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you how to seam your hat. I'm 
Now for the seam, I'm going to show it in two different parts. The first part, the first seam I'm going to show is when we're completing a, a full section of short rows and seaming our hat. And this is what is shown and written for the adult size. Then after I show you this, I'm going to go ahead and tear it out a little and show you how to complete the seam for the child size or for when you have to customize the size of your hat. So first we're going to go ahead and finish up, like I said, with a complete section of short rows and seaming our hat. Shown here, I only have two sections. So I have two full sections. And then here I have worked my last section through row seven. Again, I ended with a half double crochet row. I'm going to chain one and turn. Now, to complete the seam, I need my working yarn on the inside of my hat. So go ahead and bring it around your hook so that it's laying on the inside of your hat. Also make sure that you have a pile of yarn laying next to you to work from so that when you're working these slip stitches, they're not worked too tight for your seam. So after you bring your working yarn to the inside of your hat, you bring your last row to meet your first row. Okay, we're going to be working our seam into the front loop only of the first row which is the row closest to you, and the back loop only of our last row that we just worked. Now it's a little tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. Just all about where you insert your hook and how. Okay, so I'm going to insert my hook from front to back through the front loop only of the first stitch of row one. See my working yarn is in the inside of my hat. Then I'm going to take my hook and insert it into the back loop only from back to front. So reach outside the stitch, insert your hook towards the center of the first stitch for the last row. Okay, let's see that again. So I'm going to insert my hook from the front of the work underneath the loop into that front loop only of the first row and then I'm going to insert my hook from back to front into the first stitch of the last row. Okay, And then I have my working yarn here in the middle of my hat in the center. I'm going to add yarn over and then I'm going to pull that loop through that back loop, through that front loop, and through the loop on my hook to complete that slip stitch. Let's see that again. Insert your hook from front to back into the front loop only of the next stitch of row one. Insert your hook from back to front into the next stitch, the back loop only of the next stitch from the last row. Yarn over with your working yarn that's on the inside of your hat and pull that loop through all the loops on your hook to complete that slip stitch. Okay, let's see that again. Insert your hook from front to back into the front loop only of the next stitch. Insert your hook from back to front into the back loop only of the next stitch on the last row. Yarn over, pull that loop through all the loops on your hook to complete that slip stitch. It is a little awkward to get used to, but it creates a nearly invisible seam and looks pretty awesome. Who wants a hat with an unsightly seam? So insert your hook from front to back into the front loop only of the next stitch of the first row. Insert your hook from back to front in the back loop only of the next stitch of the last row. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull it through all loops on your hook. And you can see as you're working the seam, your seam resembles the ridges from the other rows. So when you're done, you're not going to be able to tell, or it'll be hard to tell, where your seam is. We're going to continue this way across your hat. Now you might be thinking, what do I do when I get to those short rows? Well, I'm going to show you that in just a second. So work your seam across that last row that you made. Now we need to jump down. We have two different rows. This is our first row, and that's nice and straight for us. But then we get to our short rows, and they're on an angle. 
but that's no big deal. All we're doing is matching up stitch for stitch. So we're matching this next stitch up here with this next stitch here that has a stitch marker in it. Then the second stitch will match up with this one and the last stitch will match up with this one. Okay, so even though it's uneven, don't fret about that. One stitch at a time. So insert your hook from front to back into the front loop only of the next stitch, of that first row. Now we're gonna reach down, pull up our hat a little bit, insert our hook, same way from back to front into that back loop only that you have marked with a stitch marker. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and pull that loop through all three loops on your hook. See that? Work that the same as the other ones. And you can see now it's starting to curve like the rest of our short rows did. So now we're gonna insert our hook from front to back into the front loop of the next stitch. We're gonna insert our hook from back to front into that next one, the next back loop only that's marked by our stitch marker. Gonna yarn over, pull the loop through all loops on your hook to complete that slip stitch. Now our space is getting a little tight because we're gurking to the center of our crown. You can remove the stitch markers if you'd like. I'm going to remove mine later just to show you. We're going to insert our hook from front to back into the front loop of that last stitch. And then we're going to insert our hook into the back loop from back to front of the last stitch of the last section. So you still have the three loops on your hook. Your working yarn is still in the center of your hat. See that? It's still inside your hat. Yarn over. Pull that loop through all three of those loops to complete that slip stitch. And that's it. You've worked your seam and your last row of your last section all in one. Now when you fasten off, I'm not going to fasten off just yet because I'm going to show another seam. But when you fasten off, make sure you leave a tail of yarn long enough so that you can weave in and out of these different rows and close tight that gap in the crown, which I'll show you after I complete the next seam. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull this seam out and show you how to work your hat if you need to add more rows or take away rows and you need to frog it. So if your hat is too big, no worries. Simply just pull back to where you're left with your last row is a row of half double crochet. And then work your seam as I just showed you. You work your seam, you're gonna have less stitches to work here into the short rows, but it's okay. The technique is all still the same. So again, if your hat is too big, go ahead and pull out any number of rows, making sure to end with a row of half double crochet so that when you turn, you can work your slip stitch seam across the last row and down into those short rows. So what happens if you need to work your hat and make it bigger? Then all you're gonna do is simply add more rows. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this section of short rows and show you how I work to add more rows if needed. Okay, so now I have three full sections of the short rows. And now let's say I need to add a little bit to the width of my hat so that it fits my head. I'm gonna begin another section of short rows, even though it's not written, I've already worked three or four of them, so I know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna work into the back loops only of the previous row and work a half double crochet into each stitch across. Okay, now if this is all you need to add, 
We are using a super bulky yarn, so it may be, it might add another three quarters of an inch to your hat, and it might be plenty enough so that you could just turn and work your seam then. I'm going to show you by adding three extra rows before the seam. So it'll be like working a half of a section of short rows. So you're going to work again like a row two. You chain one turn, work a slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch across to the last stitch. Leave that last stitch unworked. Okay, I forgot to add a stitch marker there for you. I'm so used to not using them and I hope you guys will be too eventually. So leave that last stitch unworked. I'm going to chain one and turn and again I'm going to work into the back loop only. Work a half double crochet into each stitch across. And then this will be row three. I feel like I'm working a half of a short row section for you. Kind of like what's shown in the child size hat. So I've worked a half section of short rows, and now I'm going to show you how to seam that half section. Just the same as we did for a full section. And again, now this would add another almost a couple of inches to the, to the circumference of your hat. So if you need to add more rows to your hat, this is the easiest way to do so without having to frog the entire hat. Okay, so we're going to chain one and turn. Remember, we're going to bring our yarn, working yarn around so that it's on the inside of your hat. We're going to bring our row one up to meet the last row. And we're going to work the seam just as I showed you before. I'm going to work this one a little, a little quicker since I've already gone over it really simply. We're going to work into the front loop only. We're going to insert our hook from front to back into the front loop only of the first stitch of the first row. Insert our hook from back to front into the back loop only of the first stitch of the last row you worked. Our working yarn is on the inside of our hat. We're gonna yarn over and pull that through all loops on your hook to complete the slip stitch. The first one is always the trickiest one to work because you've got where that slip knot is from your foundation chain. So it always kind of fumbles a little bit. We're going to continue to work our seam, insert your hook into the front loop only from front to back of the next stitch, insert your hook from back to front into the back loop only of the next stitch of the last row, yarn over, pull up a loop and pull it through all three loops on your hook. Now we're going to continue across this way till we get to the end. If you need to see this work slow, more slowly, then go to the previous section where I showed the seam for a full section of short rows. So we're going to continue across by slip stitching into the front loop only and the back loop only. Inserting your hook in the proper way is what really helps make that seam invisible. So make sure that you're doing it correctly. Insert your hook from front to back into the front loop only and then insert your hook from back to front into the back loop only of the next stitch. Okay, so now I've gotten across to the end of that last row that I worked, and I've got to finish up a short row. So I've got one stitch left. So I'm going to insert my hook into the front loop only of that next stitch, and then and squeeze my hat in a little bit to make sure that I keep the slip stitches the same size. Insert my hat, my hook, into the back loop only that stitch that I marked with the stitch marker, which is the first row of that section. So in this case, our seam has two purposes. It seams our hat and it finishes up our last section of short rows. Now you can see, let's see, you can see here is a full section of our short rows where that last row goes down to the first one. There's another full section, and you can see how they each get progressively shorter. And then here, 
is our half section of short rows. So there's only a couple before we work that long seam back to the first row. So after you've gone and done that, now we're going to close up the crown. So fasten off and leave a tail long enough to sew the crown closed. I tend to use more yarn than I need to or cut more yarn because I really don't like to have to join new yarn just to, for, to weave a crown closed. And then I have two more ends to weave in and how fun is that? <laughs> so to close up the crown, we're going to weave in and out of the rows around the hat. Now this isn't an exact science. You can weave in and out of whichever rows you'd like. I kind of just eyeball it to be honest with you. I try not to work into just one loop unless that loop is really tight. Okay. But I will find myself working through a couple of loops. So just loosely weave in and out of different loops, different rows around the hat in the crown. until you get back to where your seam is. Once you get back to where your seam is, go ahead and pull that tight. Pull your yarn tight and it will close the crown of your hat. Once you've cinched that closed tight, you can weave in your ends. So at that point I take my yarn to the inside of my hat, give it another little tug to make sure that hole is closed turn my hat inside out and then secure it and weave in my tail. And that's all there is to it. Now I just made a short little swatch, but once you're done, you just simply fold up the band of your hat however high you'd like it. And that is it. So I hope this tutorial has helped you to successfully work your first short row hat. I use this method in many of my hat patterns. You can find them in my Ravelry store. It's a really fun method and it's really not intimidating once you get the hang of it. And this is an easy hat to teach you how to work short rows. So I hope you really enjoy it and I hope that your intended wearer enjoys their new hat. Thanks for watching and have a great day.